With the recent announcement of the Super League in the news in the last couple of days, it's important to first delve into the origins. This competition, which was announced back in April of 2021, caused a huge stir in the world of football and sparked a heated debate about the future of the sport. So why was the Super League proposed in the first place? Well, the main driving force behind the proposal was the desire to challenge what many saw as a monopoly in the world of European football, UEFA. You see, UEFA, the Union of European Football Association, has a dominant position in the organization and administration of European club competitions. They control the rules, regulations, and calendar of these competitions and have the power to determine which team can participate and how the revenue generated from these competition is distributed. Now, the teams involved in this proposed Super League saw this as a problem and they wanted to do something about it. They saw an opportunity to create a new competition that would operate independently of UEFA and allow these teams to retain a larger share of their revenue generated from television rights. The teams involved were some of the biggest and most successful in the world, including the likes of Barcelona, Real Madrid, Juventus, and Arsenal. So how was the Super League structured? Well, the proposed competition would have featured 20 teams, with 15 of them being permanent members, who would be guaranteed a place in the competition each year regardless of their performance in their domestic league. The remaining five teams would qualify for the competition based on their performance in their domestic leagues. Now, let's talk about the controversial aspect of the proposal. The distribution of revenue under the current structure of European club competitions, the revenue generated from television rights is shared amongst the participating teams, as well as being used to support various initiatives and organizations within European football. But with the proposed Super League, the participating teams would have received a larger share of the revenue generated from television rights, which would have allowed them to invest more in their own operations and, and strengthen their financial positions. Now, let's expand a bit more on TV rights aspect. You see that revenue generated from television rights is, is a major source of income for European club competitions and is an important factor in the financing of professional football. With the proposed Super League, the participating teams would have received a larger share of the revenue, which would have given them greater financial stability and resources to compete at a higher level. But this arrangement also faced some criticism for potentially having a negative impact on the financial stability of smaller clubs who would have received less of the revenue generated from European club competitions if the Super League were to go ahead. So what happened with the proposed Super League? Well, the announcement of the competition was met with widespread opposition from fans, players, and even governments. It quickly became clear that the proposal was in serious trouble. Just a few days after the announcement, several of the participating teams began to withdraw from the proposal and the Super League was eventually abandoned. In case you are wondering who the architects and drivers of the project were behind the scenes, it was Andrea Agnelli, the face and head of Juventus, and Florentino Perez, the president of Real Madrid. They were approaching clubs around Europe with the idea of a Super League, with Florentino Perez working behind the scenes to get consensus from the clubs around Europe. Perez was able to get Barcelona and the top teams in England, but where he was betrayed is when he went to Paris with his team. Perez was set to have a meeting with Nasser Al Khalifi, the president of PSG, in an effort to get him into the Super League. Nasser Al Khalifi objected to the proposal, potentially due to the fact that within the scope of the Super League, teams were not allowed to use funds from outside of football, making it more difficult for the French team to potentially use their outside money to inject capital into their club. This started a rift between the two that even led to a bust up when the two drew each other in the Champions League last season. Perez showed up to the ceremonial president's lunch late, causing an argument between the two. In the return leg where Real Madrid ultimately knocked out PSG, Nasr al-Khalifi got into an argument and bust up with the staff in the Bernabeu. 
Florentino Perez, having recorded everything that occurred, submitted the video to UEFA with an official complaint. So, since the collapse of the Super League, Nasser Al Khalifi took a spot on the executive committee of UEFA. In countries like Spain, France, and Italy, the Super League was met with more than 70% approval rating from fans. So it's a very popular concept outside of English football. Many argue that English football is a Super League on its own, which dominates television rights income and has the most amount of revenue within the club. However, football in places like Spain, Italy, and France is slowly dying due to reduced revenue against inflation. Football is a beautiful sport that has the power to bring people together. What are your thoughts on the much needed reforms and changes that, that are inevitably going to take place? Should football be reformed today with a Super League or should football remain the way it is? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe.